Honestly, this morning, I came with such expectation, and it's just building while we've been in the service for what God's going to do. And, and even during our prayer, we were praying for people who said, man, when I came in here, I was in pain. And I'm telling you, I'm already feeling better. Like, I don't even feel the pain anymore. And I just felt it jump in my spirit that we need to just prepare our hearts and get ready because there is a revival that's coming, and we're going to experience an overflow of God's healing power right in the middle of our worship services. We're People, I'm just believing it that people are going to be healed just coming in and lifting their hands and worshiping because of the environment of worship that's so powerful in this room. And just, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, get ready because there's more. There's a visitation coming to our house of, of a supernatural miracle, signs and wonders. Anybody believe that? You got any faith to trust that God's going to do that this year? to just give us some grace. And, uh, and I just wanted to put that out to build your faith because I'm believing God's going to do that um, as in the next weeks, months ahead. And we're seeing revival that's just breaking out throughout the world and, and you know, crazy things happening in the world that we're in. And, and you can just, just spend a day or a few minutes on the, it, watching news and it can be so depressing. If you, don't, if you don't know God, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, man, it would, you'd go into panic mode sometimes looking at the news. And, but the good news is, no matter no matter what happens in the world, as Christ followers, if you're a Christ follower, we put our faith and our trust in God. We already know that things are going to happen in the world and there's going to be problems and issues and wars and rumors of wars and catastrophes, but, but God's people are covered by the blood of Jesus. And so we're ready. This is the greatest time in the history of the world for the church. When things seem to be falling apart, we're just now standing up and being the light of the world. So I'm really excited about what God's doing, even though it looks depressing on paper. I know that God is doing something so much greater than we could ever imagine. Anybody believe that? I'm excited for what God's going to do. And, and, and we've been talking about vision, the vision decision over the last few weeks. And we're going to stay on this until the Lord says to move on to something else. But I'm just, I'm just really uh, kind of diving in. And, and every day I've been reading Nehemiah, studying Nehemiah. We're going to talk about that February 22nd. You don't want to miss vision night. It's going to be incredible. We're going to be giving you specifics, more details of what we're planning this year. So you want to be a part of that on Wednesday, the 22nd. We're going to continue our message on the vision decision. And, and, and I, I, I've been encouraging all of us, challenging us, because I feel like the Holy Spirit has been challenging me to challenge you to make a decision to have more vision for this year than you've ever had before to have more vision, to lean in and ask the Holy Spirit, what is it that you see for my life? And I believe God's doing something so unique. Even with the Super Bowl, I really believe God's doing something supernatural. There, I believe, are six... Uh, Christians, believers playing in the Super Bowl. I keep seeing it pop up. Two of them that are, they say they're kind of like they were closeted Christians and now they're out. I'm like, okay, that's how the world talks. They're out and they're bold about their faith. That's awesome. And then you've got two brothers in the history of the, of the Super Bowl, two brothers who are playing on opposite ends, opposite teams, fighting each other, b battling it out for, for the game. And so there's a lot of unique, unusual things happening in our world if you just kind of pay attention. So that's why more than ever, we need to have vision for our lives. We need to know what God is doing because there's some unusual things happening in our world. And so vision is, is really, really critical. Whoever plays the, the, and wins the game tonight, I would say has the better strategy, has the better vision to win. As a matter of fact, over the past week, players and coaches from both teams um, have been preparing for the big game. They've been preparing. They've been practicing, right? They probably have lost a little bit of sleep. They have been watching films of the opposing team to learn and develop strategies on how to win. They, they have been seeing, okay, what trick could come up that we need to be prepared for. That's how they're all approaching the game tonight because they want to put the right plan together to win the Super Bowl. This is the game of the century, the game of their lives. They've battled it out all year. And so the preparation for these games are very intense. And so coaches are, are, have been working to put together a very specific game plan. And they're, they're finding out, they've been discovering how do we exploit the weaknesses of the other team? 
How, how do we, how do we beat our opponent? Maybe uh, what terminology should we use in case the other team knows the name of some of the plays that are being used during the game? So there's a strategy to, and there's a plan to, to find and exploit weaknesses from each other's team. Why? Because they want to win. And the more I think about it, the more I realize that's how you and I need to approach our lives. Because see, this is not just an ordinary football game because as the season ends, whoever wins, the season's gonna end for some people. Some people will lose their job if they don't win. Coaches will get laid off if they don't win. So this is a big deal. And, and this is this game tonight, and I don't know if you're gonna watch the game or not. We kind of watch it and kind of flip through to watch the commercials and have an excuse to eat wings and pizza, right? And make a cake, that's what we do. It's just kind of fun, and and uh, and but this game is not like the football games that many of you played on, you know, uh, when you were growing up, you know, out on the street or maybe at recess uh, in your backyard. It's not the same kind of game, you know, where there was really no plan, and you just said, okay, everybody, just go out, and I'm going to throw the ball to whoever's open, or you know, we're just going to give the ball to Bob, and so Bob, you just, you just, you know, just try to everybody try to block Bob, everybody just try to knock Bob down. I don't know who Bob is, but everybody's got a Bob in their life, and you just say, we're just going to tackle Bob. So just go out, and whoever's open, I'm going to throw it, and there's no strategy, there's no plan, and 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 we don't really think about what we. Need need to do to make sure that we're going to win the game. And, and that happens in our lives. There's no real plan. And every day is just one desperate attempt after another just to find something that works. Maybe this will work now, or maybe that will work, but it doesn't have to be this way because God has a game plan for your life. He has a strategy to help you defeat, overcome, expose the lies of the enemy. And if you and I will follow God's plan and will implement God's plan, we'll begin to see the, the, the vision for our lives begin to manifest, begin to emerge. It's exciting when you think about it. And so if we implement God's plan, uh, we can do that if we'll follow two different principles. There's two principles that I'm going to talk about. We're going we're gonna to keep it easy, and then I'm going to go deep. Is that all right? We're going to keep it easy, and then I'm going to do a deep dive for all the deep people in the room, okay? So the first principle we need to remember is that God calls the plays, not us. God calls the plays, not you. Our job is to simply run the play. That's what you and I are called to do. We pray. That's part of the plan. We get in God's presence. We take time. We say, God, what's the vision? What's the play? Even for today, God, what's the plan for today? How do you want me to act before I get out of this bed? Help me get my mind right. I need about an hour of prayer and coffee before you even talk to me, before my attitude is adjusted. I don't know what happens by the time I go to sleep and wake up the next day, but I just need, like, don't look at me. You're probably not going to get a good reaction, okay? I'm getting better, but that's just kind of the way it is, right? I need to get my heart aligned with God's word so that I can do what I need to do for that day. And, and so, so we've got to understand that there are principles to living out vision for our lives. And that first principle is that God calls the plays. And God calls the plays futuristically, but he's already prophetically called the play for your life and for mine. Jeremiah 1, 4, and 5. The Bible says this. It says, the word of the Lord came to me. This is what Jeremiah said. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I, 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 I knew you before I even conceived you, before you were even conceived, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That's why we're pro-life, because we believe God knew us before we were even conceived in our, in our mother's womb. Amen? What's another day? We'll get to, y'all know how we feel about that. But God had a plan for Jeremiah's life, he appointed Jeremiah to be a prophet and to accomplish a certain task even before he was conceived, before he was born. God had given, a, 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 had, had a heart, and had, had it in his heart for Jeremiah to come to this earth as a prophet and he appointed Jeremiah to be a prophet. He appointed us, he appointed you and he didn't become a prophet just because his dad was a prophet. 
right? He didn't go to a job fair and get a consultation and figure out he was going to be a prophet. No, he was appointed by God. It was a part of Jeremiah's plan that he would be a prophet. And if Jeremiah followed God, then even if he was overwhelmed, even if he was underqualified, even if he was intimidated and immature, if he followed God's plan for his life, God had a greater plan and God had mapped it out. And so it was Jeremiah's decision decision to see God's vision for his life instead of his own because he'd already be, been appointed. Listen, it, listen, in, in tonight's game, um, there, there's, there's two football teams and their job is to follow the game plan. This is so important for you and for me. And I'm telling you, I've, I've studied this and I don't even really care about football. So I should get a lot of points for this. Okay. I should get a lot of extra points. Uh, and it's a lot, okay? Uh, but <laughs> successful teams follow a plan, but not only do they follow a plan, they know the role in that plan. They know the part that they are to play. Sometimes there are certain plays that are called and the coaches call a play and the players think they know better, but they can't run a play that has not been called by the coach because they're part of something bigger. They can't just go wild and start running. They've got to follow the, the plan, the play, the strategy that's been laid out by the coaches. And this is how they are successful because they know the play and they know their role. And did you know that God, God not only has a plan for your life, but God has a role for your life. He has a calling for your life. We can't just find out what are we supposed to do. We're, we're to ask God, who have you made me to be? Been made in your image. What calling is on my life? And it's the same way. It's not our job to decide what God's plan is for our lives. It's you and I's job to discover what God's plan is. If he knew us and he formed us before we were even conceived, he told Jeremiah later on, I, I formed you in the womb. I had a plan. I appointed you prophet to the nations before you were even conceived. This is, this, this is exciting because that's what God has done for you and for me as well. So we don't flounder. We don't wonder. We don't need to spend time all frustrated and, and, and exhausted trying to figure it out. No, we get in times of prayer. We spend time in God's presence and God begins to reveal his plan for our lives. And, and, and I, 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 I want to help you today because if you recognize that it's time for you to discover God's plan, not to just decide God's plan for your life, you might say, but then how do I discover it? Give me a little bit more you know, meat on the bones, a few more principles. Will you do it the same way Jeremiah did by listening to God? If you want to find, discover God's plan for your life, listen to God. Jeremiah 1, 4, this is an important phrase. It says, he said, now the word of the Lord came to me. Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me. Did you know that that phrase is found in the book of Jeremiah over 20 times? The word of the Lord came to me. Jeremiah said this, it appears in this chapter, in, in the book of Jeremiah over 20 years, and that's important for you and I to know because it's a reminder that God loves us and he loves to communicate with us. He's got a greater plan. He's got a strategy. He knows how to make sure that you win. And if we'll pay attention to his voice, we will win. And so when we read Jeremiah, it's a, it's a, it's a, a remembrance that God, a reminder that God communicates to us through his word. That's important that we spend time in God's word so that when we're reacting to a circumstance or maybe we're, we're hit with a problem, we don't speak doubt or fear, anxiety. We speak God's word over our situation. That's what the prophetic word is, is when we use God's word, we speak God's word back to him. How many of you were here when I preached the double-edged sword, that there's nothing more powerful than when God speaks his word and then a believer speaks that same word that it's, it's two sides of a sword and it actually becomes two-edged or a double sword, which cuts both ways. It has double damage. So there's nothing more powerful than when you speak the word of God out of your mouth. 
And, and we, we, we need to understand this. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. God is standing by his word to perform it. Think about that right now. God is standing next to the words and the promises that he's given you, that he's going to heal you. He's going he's to make you whole. He, he's going to bless you. Whatever God's going to do in your life, he's standing by his word to perform it. That's right there makes me feel like a winner. I don't know about you, but I'm a winner. But, but because God, not because of anything I've done, but because God wants to, me to win. He's setting us up every day to win. He knows strategies you don't know. He knows the way the enemy operates that you might not see. He, he, he knows the devil's weaknesses that you might not know. So it's so important for your marriage, for your family, for your finances, for your future, that we get God's vision for our lives. Amen? Amen? And, and I have learned sometimes I'll listen to God to get vision for my life or the next step or something that I'm praying about and what do I do next? And I don't always know. And there are times I can tell, man, I'm a quick decision maker. I know that I know that I know. And there's other things that I, I have no clue. I don't know. I've asked 10 people that are super saved and can speak in tongues in 12 languages. And I don't, I don't have a clue what to do. And I, and I have to go back to the drawing board. I've got to go back because sometimes I'll even listen for weeks and for months and I still don't know what God wants me to do. But, I, but I've learned this. I've learned this. This is why principles are, are, are important because God knows what I need to know when I need to know it. I don't ever have to worry about what I don't know. I just spend time in God's presence. I just do what I know. I keep worshiping because at the right time, I know, I'll know what I need to know. That's good news right there. You just, you just, your job is to listen for the play and to run the play. And then God will give you the next step. You know, for years ago, when my kids were little, I um, taught a music class in the, in the school. It was a little private school that they went to, little kindergartners. It was so cute. And I learned really quickly that I had to establish a few rules. Anybody with kids know that. Work with kids. You got to have rules. There has to be boundaries. Okay. And I remember one of the rules that I set was this, is that when we're doing an activity, nobody was allowed to ask me this question. What are we doing next? right? Don't ask me what we're doing next. Why? Because if I did not have this rule, inevitably some child would raise their hand in the middle of snack time, in the middle of of whatever I was teaching them, and they would say, what are we doing next? And when we're finished, can we eat? Are we going outside? Are we going to take a nap? What's coming next? And it would drive me crazy because there was always some child who could not focus on what was happening at the moment. They always had to be focused on what was going to happen next. Y'all are quiet and you're looking at each other a little bit too. That's the way many of us live our lives. I just need to know what's next. I just need to know what's coming next. I need to know everything now. I need to know who am I going to marry now and when am I going to get married and how is this going to happen and when is that job coming and when is that freedom come? When is it? I need to know now. And can I tell you, that's not the way God leads us. You need to know this or it's going to be frustrating because a coach's plan for the fourth quarter in the game today might be different from his plan from the first quarter. He might have to change. Listen, when the game begins, a coach does not want his players asking, hey, what are we doing in the fourth quarter? (laughs) No, I need you to get your head in the game. A good coach wants the team to focus on the play now. Focus on what's happening now. Don't worry about what's going to happen later. (laughs) A second principle is we need to remember in God's game plan for our lives is every play is important. Every play is important. This is so critical because sometimes we'll hear, you know, I'm not a sports, I mean, I'm a little bit of a sports fan by marriage. Um, I I played, how many of you played tetherball? Anybody played tetherball? That is the most dumb, dangerous, pointless game. 
And I remember in high school, it was like, the, remember the Wonder Years? Remember that show, The Wonder Years, where it was that kid in junior high, and then it was, it was all overdubbed and by his, an, the older version, and it was just every day, everything that happened was just magnified like 20,000 times. And he was, if it was a little bit of an embarrassment, it was this massive thing that everybody heard about. And that's how I felt in junior high. Like everything was just, just, just magnified. If anybody looked at me funny, I'd Cry, you know, I'd start crying. Anybody else like that? I was just, um, okay, probably that was oversharing. I'm sorry. Um, but I remember one time, and I always had the meanest PE coaches. They were just mean. And it felt like they were out to get me. And they wanted to embarrass me and humiliate me in front. It wasn't hard to do because I was easy to humiliate because I wasn't good at sports. I'd rather be in the chorus class with my nerdy friends or in band. That's where I wanted to be. And I remember one day they made us play uh, tetherball. And that, this day I'm like, I'm going to get this. I'm going to show this coach that I am athletic and I'm going to do it. And so I, I watched all these people just walk up to this ball on a string that wraps around a pole, which is so dumb. Okay. And so it's wrapping around the pole. And so everybody's like, and then there's like, pop, and it's going around and they knock it, it, hit it back. It looks so easy. And so I'm working myself up. I'm like, I'm going to hit this thing, man. I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit it one time and it's going to just fly around that pole. And I'm going to be declared the winner and the greatest tetherball uh, athlete of all time in this 12 year old in mentality of mine. And so I am so worked up when it's my turn and she calls my name. I think I, I think I went Ur! or something crazy. And I ran I ran to the part where the tether, and I hit it, and it came around and knocked me in the head <laughs> on the ground, and it just kind of flung. And I know my, I looked over at my PE teacher, and she was like, all right, let's go in. Everybody in, we're going in. I mean, it was so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. And I, I didn't tell you that story except to embarrass myself, but, but that's how we feel sometimes. But we've got to understand that we, we sometimes build ourselves up for that one big moment, that one big play, and it doesn't all hinge on that one big moment, that there are many moments. Every play is important. And honestly, I, I see this, the, 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 the sports announcers, they love the sports announcers. They, they love to, to exaggerate things, right? You'll get near the end of the game, and they'll say, this is the play, folks. It all comes down to this right here. <laughs> right? And everybody's like, oh God, this is it. Oh Lord, this is it. And, and, and everything, you, you know, you, you got chicken wing. You ate one bite. You're just hanging out of your mouth. And you're just like, this is it. This is it. This is, this is the significance of this single play. But any good coach will tell you that games are not won or lost on a single play. Every play is important, and in our lives, every day is important. In the last two verses of our text, Jeremiah, he says, Jeremiah, I have put my words in your mouth. I have set you this day over nations, over kingdoms, to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Notice that God says to Jeremiah, this day, I have set you above nations and kingdoms. Notice he does not say, someday I'll set you. He said, no, this day, not tomorrow, not somewhere in the future. He said, today, today I have set you this day over nations, over kingdoms, and then gives them the play to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build, and to plant and God has done the same for you and for me this day, today, not tomorrow, not when you get all ready, not when you're more mature, not when you put a little bit more time in, not when you've been a little bit. No, this day, God said, I've called you. I've appointed you. I've set you above nations. See, when you begin to understand that God's taking your every days and he's accumulating those things and he's creating greater success in your life based on every choice, every moment, the time that you make a decision to be mature or the times that you make a decision to moan and complain. God said, even in the moments that you fail, you fumble the ball and now you, you drop the ball. God called the play. He threw it and you dropped it and you're running trying to get it. And while you're running and you've got your back turned, the enemy is now targeting you. God said, even in that environment, I have called you and I've set you apart. So I can grab that ball. I can get back in the game. 
I can trust that God has something greater for my life, but he calls the plays. I don't call the plays. He makes the decisions for me. I don't make decisions for me. I'm I'm here to say, God, I'm at your service. I'm at your mercy because whatever you've got planned is so much bigger. It's so much better. It's so much greater. It's so much grander than anything that I could ever think or imagine. It can't even enter. Can I tell you, it hasn't even entered into your mind. The thoughts that God had, just his thoughts that he has towards you. Stop getting so bogged down by that one mistake, that one difficulty, that one feeling of inadequacy, that one moment that you walked up to the tetherball and instead of doing what you thought, it actually knocked you out and hit you on the ground. That doesn't define you. God's word defines you. You just got to make a decision today. What does God's word say? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully. I am made by God. He loves me with an everlasting love, extravagant love of God. See, that's what God wants you to know today. It's not even about what you do for him. It's just about, just, God, I just receive your love for my life. Come on, anybody just need to hear this? God loves you. God wants to restore you. He wants to heal you. He wants to give you another play. And many of us are still stuck in 10 years ago. And we feel like God is just, no, no, no. I got to get some things to, I've heard people say that. Well, you know, I'm at 80. I need to be at hundred before I give it all to God. Well, good luck. Cause you ain't never going to be, and I guarantee you're not even at 80. You, you, you come to God just as you are. God, I, I want you to call the play for my life. I'm done running. I'm done doing this myself. I need to know what it is to to lean in to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to direct my paths. Some of you, God has been good to you. He's even put people in your world that are that are believers and they're praying for you and you're finding your steps are ordered just because of the prayers of people are in your life. And if you'll just surrender completely to God, I'm telling you, there is a momentum that will come in your world, in your life. If you'll surrender to the plan. Some of you parents, you've been praying for your kids and your kid is saying one thing, I'm not this and I want that and I won't, when I finally have my choice, I'm, listen, and you just laugh and go, listen, you will never get out from under the hand of God. I don't really care what you think you're gonna do, but I won't worry about you because I know that your steps, Jeremiah, just like he called Jeremiah, he's called you and set you apart and he's appointed you to nations. That's what you tell your kids. All right, you go play your little games. When the word of God comes to you, when the word of God, Jeremiah said 20 times, the word of God came to me. God is standing by his word. His word is alive. It's living. It's active. It's breathing. It's a double-edged sword. It's not just a book we read. It's alive. You just keep declaring God's word and allowing God to give you vision. To give you vision. Promotion's coming, but it comes from the Lord. You don't want promotion that you can can manufacture. You want to say, God, I, whatever you do for me, I want it to blow the minds of the people around me. I want it to be a moment where my family stands in awe and says that had to be, that had to be otherworldly. That had to be God. So that's my desire. God, whatever you do for me, I want you to get all the credit. Whatever it is, you bless me with. I want people that know me to go, there is no way she could have made that. I know her. She could have made, she's too flaky. She can't figure that out. Only God could do that. And that's what God wants for your life too. God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I called you and I set you apart and I called you to be prophet to the nations. Church, this is the time when we get a vision for God. It's so much bigger than just having a great business. Can I tell you that? That's important. We need to provide for our families. But what God wants you to, wants to do for your life is so much bigger. He wants you to prophesy through your business. He wants you to bring light and life to those around you through whatever he's called you to do. These young men that are going to play tonight, the Christians, man, we're all going to be like, man, go, Jesus, go. And when they win and they're standing at the end and they're being interviewed and they can go, I give all the glory to Jesus. 
give all the glory, and then their lives actually line up with finally with what they preach. What does that do? It changes the world. I want my life to reflect Jesus in everything I do. So when that time comes and God elevates me and I have a moment in front of the world, man, I'm, I can tell, I, I can, in that moment, I step into that prophetic calling and I don't shrink back and I'm not afraid. And see, God wants to do the same thing for you. He wants to call you to that place. He wants you to understand God calls the place. You don't want it to be any other way. You want him to call every play. Because that's how, that's, how, that's how your life is more successful than you could ever imagine. It's when God calls the place. We listen. We hear. God, what do you have? And then God says, I'm going to show you how to overcome the enemy. I'm going to show you how to worship and praise because the enemy has literally targeted your family. I'm going to show you how to worship through it. My brother-in-law, 10 years ago, had a heart attack. He was on the floor. Five paramedics were... were we're beating on his chest. It was over. He had the widow maker. There was no way. It was impossible. And, and my sister calls me and, and I could hear it in her voice. And she's like, please pray right now. I think it, I don't think he's going to make it. And I'm standing in Target. Nicole was 13 years old. And I'm like, what? I didn't care what anybody thought about me at that moment. I just started praying and I could hear her tears. And I said, stop crying right now in the name of Jesus. Don't even let the enemy see you sweat. This victory is yours. You have worshiped, and I begin to, I'm in Target. I'm prophesying on the phone. Nicole didn't understand what I was saying, so she just starts praying in tongues. Standing right there, we didn't care. There's people coming in, in the lobby of Target, people coming in and out. In that moment, everything God had called me to be just, just, just came to be. I begin to prophesy, he'll live and not die. He'll live and not die. This is your victory. This is your win. He will live. Don't cry. Don't be afraid. Don't you dare have any anxiety over this. This has already been foreknown. God's got this. God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. How did I have that kind of confidence in a room I was not in? How did I have that kind of confidence when my, my sister's telling us later, the paramedics had asked her the same questions three times? because they knew he was about to die. And they were just trying to dis distract her. They said, you better call everybody you know. See, that's what God wants. That's why if you let the Holy Spirit call the place in those moments where the enemy has targeted your family, you just say, just like Jeremiah, you've called me to be a prophet to the nations prophet to the nation of my family, a prophet to the nations of my city. I'm called to be a prophet to the nations of my church. I'm called to be a prophet to the nations of the streets in my neighborhood. I know that I'm called before I was even formed in my mother's womb, just like Jeremiah. I was called, appointed, set apart, and I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and I know that I'm about to win because I'm not running my own plays. I'm running the play that is strategic from the Spirit of God. Woo. Father, we thank you for this time we have in your presence. We ask God that you would just take every word and continue to illuminate it in our hearts and that this would be a seed that would just be, it's just starting to grow. God, don't let the enemy steal the seed of the Word of God. Today, we're going to go home and just begin to quote Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before I formed you, God, you knew me. You knew me. You set me apart. You've appointed me to the nations as a prophet. God, you've called me. And God, that would be revelation in our hearts today. We'd fight the enemy, fight fear, fight dread, fight worry, fight confusion with the Word of God today. Thank you, Father, that you're standing by your word to perform it. We give you praise. We thank you today. Stirring our hearts, stirring up our faith. Trust your word, not our ways. We give you praise. Just take a moment with me today if you would just continue praying. Continue praying. You know, Jeremiah came. God appointed him early as a way to let us know that God loves us. He wants to communicate it with us. And wherever you are in your walk with God, I want you to know that today. God loves you and He desires, He loves to talk to you. 
He loves it. He gave us His Word. He gave us the Spirit of God. He even put friends, family, community, people in our world that have gifts to speak the life of God over us. So He, he left us a lot of resources to let us know He loves to talk to us. So today you need to talk to God. Take a moment and talk to God. If you're struggling with your faith, if you're not sure you know what you believe, if you've never given your life to Christ, talk to God. God, help me know you. I wanna know you. What is, what is this Word of God that I need to be living by? Help me, show me how to read it. Show me how to live for you. Show me, Holy Spirit. You know what that is? That's just that prayer that's welcoming the Holy Spirit in your life. If you're here today and you would say, I, I need to make some changes. I need to surrender my life to Christ. I need the Holy Spirit to come in. Jesus has already forgiven me of all of my sins. I just need to say thank you and accept forgiveness. And when you do that, that's when the beginnings of this new process start of living your life according to the plan of God. If you're in this room today and you would say, I've made some mistakes. I've been living my life like that last play was gonna crush everything. But I now I see that it's not just one thing, that God's gonna put it all back together. But I know I need forgiveness of sins. I know I need to make it right with God. And I'm ready to do that today. Would you lift your hand? If you'd say there's anyone in this room, yes. I need to get it right with God. I need for the past to be the past so I can look to the future. I need to surrender my life to Him. Yes, I need a Savior. Yes, I need a Lord over my life. Amen and amen. Praise God. I want us all to pray this prayer together. Say it out loud. Say, Dear Jesus, today I surrender everything. I receive forgiveness of all of my sins. Holy Spirit, You are welcome in my life to change me, to get me on the right path, to help me hear God's voice. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. And today I give you my life. I know that I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give God the praise. Come on, let's give Him praise.